Fascia Research Society invites ABMP podcast listeners to attend the 6th International Fascia Research Congress, September 10th through 14th, 2022 in Montreal. The event includes eight keynote speakers, over 60 parallel session talks and posters, seven full and eight half-day workshops, and a two-day fascia-focused dissection workshop. The lineup of keynote speakers and workshops is already available on the Fascia Research Society website, and the full Congress schedule will be out June 3rd. Register for the 6th International Fascia Research Congress today at fasciaresearchsociety.org. Easily run your business with free online scheduling, payment processing, and more from the new ABMP Pocket Suite Signature Edition. ABMP has partnered with Pocket Suite to bring members a free, easy to use phone app that lets you focus on what matters most your clients. Businesses on Pocket Suite see an average 30% increase in earnings, and you can get set up in 15 minutes by choosing from curated, preloaded settings or customizing the app for your practice. Features include online scheduling. HIPAA compliant intake forms and contracts, and payment processing, all included in the ABMP Signature Edition and all free to ABMP members. Go to abmp.com slash pocket suite to get started and spend more time focusing on what you love. I'm Darren Buford. And I'm Kristen Coverly. And welcome to the ABMP podcast, a podcast where we speak with the massage and bodywork profession. Our guest today is Abigail James. Abigail is an award winning skincare and well being expert who has established herself worldwide as one of the most respected expert facialists and voices within the health and beauty industry. She consults regularly with top lifestyle, skincare, and well being brands. For more information about Abigail, visit abigailjames.com. Hello, Abigail, and hello, Kristen. Hi, it's a pleasure to be here. Welcome, Abigail. We're so excited to talk with you today about skincare self-care for ourselves and tips to enhance our work with our massage and bodywork clients. Your book, The Glow Plan, Face Massage for Happy, Healthy Skin in Four Weeks, contains great information on internal and external factors that impact our skin's overall health and vitality, like nutrition, sleep, the products that we're using, It also includes a four-week daily facial massage routine. So we have so much to talk to you about today. Let's jump in and get started. First of all, can you share with us what are the most important components of improving and maintaining our skin health? That's a great first question, by the way, because skin health is multifaceted. And I think the first thing people immediately think of is probably their skincare products. And that is only part of of the journey. Another key thing is what we're eating. You know, the it's the lifestyle factor. We we are what we eat, and you know, it is building the cells from within us that are supporting the skin. So we've got our products, and then we've got our nutrition. But then we've got other lifestyle factors such as stress, <laughs> work, those external factors that, you know, do make a, a huge impact on how our brain works, how our hormones are set up and all of those things impact on the skin. We've then got other things that we can impact in a positive way, like the physical touch, as in the massage. And then that next stage on from that might be some technology and bits of things that we can be doing to the skin, maybe within a facial or some gadgets at home. So there are a number of things that impact on our skin in the aging process. But then all of those things, we can actually do things about to support it. So Abigail, what is one of those things that listeners can do or stop doing to improve their own skin health? Okay, so I'm going to start with the internals, as in the the nutritional side of things, because in my clinic and over my practice, I've been doing this for over 20 years now. Often people will, whether they find me on social media or come for a treatment or a consultation, there might be a skin issue or a skin concern. It doesn't have to be full-blown 
acne or eczema. It could just be inflammation, but there are all those, those other skin issues as well. And my first thing in my consultation or chatting to someone is, all right, let's delve into the nutrition. Give me a rough day of food. What are you eating? Because nine times out of 10, there might be some key triggers amongst that. And even if someone thinks they have a healthy diet, I think our modern diets are not necessarily as healthy as we would want them to be. So that's usually my first starting point. What, what's going on internally and how can we best support that? So it might be some dietary tweaks or changes. I don't like elimination. I think maybe there are some foods that actually, do you know what? We might need to put those to one side for a bit. However, if we're going to do that, we need to replace. You know, I, I think balance in our diet is important and anything in excess, you know, you could be into your yoga and if you're doing it excessively, that's not good for us, you know? So that's kind of some simple things. Looking at the diet, I, I often will get someone to keep a diet diary for at least three days. I think that's a good thing because even though we might be thinking, yeah, yeah, I'm healthy. I only have that one coffee. But actually, maybe when you physically write down everything that passes your lips during the day, you go, oh, actually, I'm, I'm, there's a lot more of that. Or maybe there's more tea or, gosh, I grabbed three biscuits in the afternoon. Or, you know, maybe if I analyze it, well, it was cereal for breakfast and a sandwich for lunch and pasta for dinner. So, you know, you go, oh, hold on a minute. It's quite wheat heavy. And sometimes we need that personal recognition because someone can say, yeah, I think your diet might be heavy in this, but taking ownership of, of our own diet and health is, is so important. So that is one of the first steps that I, I think is key to skin health and aging well. What's your go-to facial massage technique that you recommend practitioners incorporate into every client session? I think if you, because I know obviously hands-on therapists, some have more of a focus on body work, where others might actually have some skill and knowledge in skin and face. And I know there's quite a variety in that learning and skill set that a, an individual therapist might have. So. I think disregarding where you're coming from, I would always cleanse the skin first, be that with a gentle cream cleanser, a wash or, or something, and use some type of plant-based oil on the skin. So no mineral oils, uh, so no baby oils or anything like that, a plant-based. It could even be olive oil, something really, you know, a base oil. I wouldn't use too much. Because actually, when we're working on the muscles of the face, we don't want to be slipping past the muscles too much. We actually want to be able to slightly grab hold of some muscle to be able to have that impact. From a simple massage move that most, if not all therapists will be able to do, would be using firm finger pressures and focusing on circular movements. And instead of gliding over the skin too much, actually getting into the muscle and moving in a deeper way rather than just gliding on the surface. I find a lot of people have that tension in jaw, cheeks, you know, so you can get really stuck into that area of the face, but you can replicate those kind of moves, maybe in a smaller way, you know, small circular moves deep in the forehead, uh, under the cheekbones, under the jaw as well. So those are really simple moves. Another nice way to get in deeper into that, that DMJ area um, is to, to get the knuckles involved. But again, stationary, pressure into, but moving within the tissue rather than just gliding across. Face massage should never hurt. I think that's a key thing to, to bear in mind. Some of it can feel that pleasure pain kind of feeling, 
but it should never, you know, your, your client shouldn't be pulling away from you thinking, oh, wow, that's a bit feisty. So it's also getting that pressure right. But you can work deeper on the face than some practitioners might think. Kristen, do you incorporate facial massage in your practice or have you with your clients over the years? Absolutely. I think unless a client says that they don't want it for some reason, I think most practitioners do, although they probably, if they're like me, have the same handful of moves that we've had since massage school, right? So I think, you know, we kind of have our little routine that we do. It's a small part of the big full body session, but I think that it's great for us to learn new techniques, try something different, incorporate something new, um, because as just as Abigail was saying, the masseter area, TMJ area holds so much tension around the jaw, around the side. Um, and it feels so, so number one, working on the actual musculature, but number two, it feels so good it's relaxing. And so I think it's a great area that we could always be learning some new techniques to do something different. And it's interesting too, talking about product, because I think most of us, you know, are using our massage lotion. We have a little bit left in our hands. We just use that, you know, so it's good for us to hear about, okay, do we take a moment to cleanse the skin and use a different product on the face than we use on the body? That's really good information. I also think it very much depends on the face in front of you. Cause if you can see that actually maybe someone's breaking out, they've got a bit of acne. Do you know what? I wouldn't be doing any of the gliding moves on them. I'd probably go a little bit more stationary acupressure moves, which is still stimulating blood flow and easing tension and they're getting a therapeutic benefit from it. But you don't want to be massaging over breakouts and also with skin conditions like rosacea, and maybe even an eczema. You you just need to be a little bit careful, especially if like you've just said, I don't know, maybe you've been using an aromatherapy oil on the body and you're kind of naturally thinking this is great to take onto the face. If they've got a bit of skin sensitivity, you have to be so careful with the type of aromatherapy that you then might apply to to a, a sensitized facial skin. And question, Abigail, if we're taking the technique that you talked about, that's really just some gentle circular movement, circular friction. Could we do that without product? Or do you recommend always having a little bit of product? So great question. Generally, I do like having some product on the skin. I think we might be causing a little bit too much friction unless it's what I call a stationary circle. Yeah. Um, The only time that I would really actually do a face massage without an oil is if I'm doing a lymphatic, you know, I I trained with the Bodded School of Lymphatic Drainage and actually you don't want oil or you're going to be slipping past that that lymph and it's not going to be as effective. So that's the only time really on the face that I wouldn't be using some kind of slip. Let's take a short break to hear a word from our sponsors. Anatomy Trains is delighted to invite you to our in-person fascial dissection workshop, October 10th through 14th, 2022. We're excited to be back in the lab with Anatomy Trains author Tom Myers and master dissector Todd Garcia in Todd's Laboratory of Anatomical Enlightenment in Boulder, Colorado. Join students from around the world and from all types of manual, movement, and fitness professions to explore the real human form, not the images you get from books. Visit anatomytrains.com for details. Hey, lifelong learners. Did you know that Elements Massage Studios are hiring and at the top of their list is curious massage therapists like you? Elements Massage Studios are all about improving the lives of everyone they touch. For them, that includes giving you training in new skills, a supportive team, and chances to grow a client list. If this sounds like it could be your new home, let them know we sent you by going to elementsmassage.com slash ABMP. That's elementsmassage.com slash ABMP. Now let's get back to the podcast. Abigail, one of the tools and techniques you incorporate into your daily massage routine is dry brushing. Many massage therapists have been introduced to dry brushing at some point during their training, but may not do it regularly themselves or incorporate it into their client sessions. Can you tell us about the benefits of dry brushing and how you suggest people incorporate it in their daily routine? Yeah, sure. So 
dry brushing is one of those actually within the spa industry that you you might have come across. And it's one of those, I'm going to say, slightly ancient methods of, of treating the body um, that you can add on to any massage, do it personally or do it with clients. Dry brushing is something that I would do on the body, not necessarily on the face. And there's a variety of different brushes. Some of them are cactus bristle, which they are quite feisty, uh, but then others are, you know, a little bit softer. And I think with dry brushing, the ideal is to be working if we think of feet upwards. So working towards the heart, or maybe you're working in that lymphatic way, you know, maybe that's the focus of, of your treatment. If it was incorporated into a treatment, I would probably dry brush first because it's exfoliating the skin. It's stimulating blood flow. It's supporting that lymphatic system. Then I would be getting your oil or other product and then massaging after dry body brushing. As I said, it's great for circulation, uh, lymph flow. You can get really stuck into thighs, buttocks. You know, it's not going to get rid of cellulite, but it's a great support with those types of treatments. Um, and then personally, there are so many benefits to it. You know, if you've got a dry body brush in your bathroom, start at your feet, work up the legs, up the body, up the arms from hands to armpits. Um, if you can kind of get your arms around your back and around your torso, that's great. It's it's good. We know that the lymphatic system is so important to health. And it's it's one of those key things that we can do to ourselves that is a big support on that side of things. And I love incorporating it in the morning, if I have time, to do a dry body brush, cold shower. Then if I'm going to put some you know, oil or moisturizer on or something like that, that's a nice sweet spot to be starting your day. I love it. And you mentioned cold shower. Another thing you talk about the book is using cold water, showers or splash on the face. Can you tell us a little bit more about the benefits of that? Yeah. So interestingly, my, my father, he's this eccentric character and he has been cold bathing as was his father. He recalls his father, uh, he used to work in uh, the fishmonger industry, and he recalls his father getting up at like three or four in the morning to go to the fish markets and kind of almost screaming in the shower as he was having his cold showers. And my father took that into his life, not the screaming, the cold, <laughs> the cold baths and the, and the showers. And he's even gone to the, the lengths of, he, he's got this old cattle trough that he's enameled and he's filled, it's outside and he's even kind of wooden planked. So it looks like a swanky spa type thing. And he's made a lid for it. And he's got a beer cooler. He's actually got two beer coolers on it and a filtration system. Wow. So he, yeah, I know. I tell you, he's, I mean, this is the tip of the iceberg when we're talking <laughs> about my father. Um, and he cold baths, he maintains it at a certain temperature and he has cold baths daily for years and he is as fit as anything so obviously I've got that crazy input into my life but I also have the spa input with my training and my learning over the past you know 20-25 years so I know the benefits of cold bathing, cold showering. And I think at the moment it's, I don't know what it's like over there, but in the UK, it's really having its moment. The, the cold therapy is so beneficial for so many things, which is great because it's so easily accessible to people. And we can incorporate that in many different ways. In my, in my clinic, I actually have a cryotherapy machine where I can actually get the skin temperature down to between naught and four degrees. So we're actually simulating cell death to stimulate that, that cell renewal, which is fascinating. And I know this particular device, it's actually used by physiotherapists, you know, for injuries, sports injuries. Uh, and I'm using it for skin rejuvenation, which, uh, yeah, it's, it's great. But even, even from an at-home point of view on, let's say, the most simplest of forms, it's cold water. 
in your bath or in your sink if you want to make it colder throw some ice cubes in it and it's whether it's holding that on the skin or splashing that on the skin or getting submerged in it it's kind of that pleasure pain feeling but the euphoria that you feel afterwards if you manage to get fully in you feel like when you're doing it, it's like why why am i doing this to myself oh my god this is hurting i literally can't you know i've got brain freeze in my fingers but the blood flow and the lymph flow and everything that you get after that is just incredible and i, d- I don't think there's many health concerns that wouldn't benefit from it and it has that anti-inflammatory effect it is also the studies on how it's been used to benefit people with depressive conditions and how it can boost the mood. So it's multifaceted in in what it can do. Abigail, another tool you recommend using is the gua sha, which is like mysterious if we've never used it or had, you know, that type of application. So let's talk about it. Tell us more about the tool, its benefits and how you recommend using it. Okay. So gua sha, I never know how to pronounce it properly. No, and I'm often pulled up on it on my YouTube channel. People think it's not pronounced like that. <laughs> um, it's a great tool. It is from Chinese medicine, and they come in lots of different beautiful shapes, but it's it's a flat, usually stone. It might be rose quartz or jade or onyx or, or something like that. The is is smooth it's got beautiful edges to it and but fundamentally you can use that to glide isn't deep enough a word and scrape is too deep it's something in between okay but you can use it for drainage to be able to get deeper into the muscle they do use them on the bodies really that is a scraping and when they're using it on bodies to actually scrape and bring that blood up to the surface. So it does leave those lines on you and it has that detoxification impact. Obviously on the face, we are not using it any depth like that. You know, bruising is not an outcome that we want from it. So it's not a scraping, but we can use it to get in deeper. You can use one of the kind of curved edges on it for maybe some acupressure work, some gliding out. And the way I I like to describe, if you're kind of slightly concerned with what movement or direction to be going in, I really like working again with that lymphatic flow that we'd be considering. So from if we imagine the midpoint of the face, that nose, as if we were lay on our back and we were pouring water on our face, it would go nose down the cheeks and out to the ears. And that's quite a nice direction to be thinking of. It is great for if you wake up in the morning and you're looking a little bit puffy and a bit sleepy and you need to rebuild your face in the day. <laughs> it's great to use in that morning massage, scooping under the cheekbones, around the eyes to really work on that drainage and not forgetting to then be going down the neck, continue the drainage down. Oh, I love it. And listeners, I did Google the pronunciation, so hopefully we got it right. Fingers crossed. <laughs> um, and then along those same lines, Abigail, jade rollers, which I think more people know about and may even have in their own home. Those are the same effect, right? Rolling on the skin to increase the drainage, decrease puffiness. So they are. However, I find you can't get in half as deeply as you can with the gua sha. So if it was one or the other, I would totally go gua sha. You've just got so much more flexibility with it. I do kind of feel that maybe the jade rollers, it's good for a little bit of drainage. And maybe if you keep one in the fridge and you want to go around the eyes, that type of thing, it's it's that, but it's a little bit more on the fluffy side than let's get a little bit stuck in and do something here. Abigail, what thoughts do you have for massage therapy listeners thinking about becoming an esthetician and adding skincare as an additional modality? That's a great question. And I actually, I get quite a few therapists ask me on, on social media. So I spent many years as a massage therapist, as in a body worker, but I'd done my beauty therapy training first. So I'd done the facial electrics and the skin and the skin conditions. And that's quite involved to learn that side of things. But I suppose my career went that way and then into the body work and 
you know, sports injury massage, a tie and a Vedic and all of those kind of things, which for me has definitely shaped how I address the muscles on the face. So for a massage therapist who that's their core training, there's a few different angles I'd be thinking of that if they were serious about getting into skin, I'd actually be recommending some kind of beauty therapy addition because the skin is such a complex organ. And the chances are you're then going to be getting someone through the door that has a skin condition that you're feeling a little bit ill prepared to be able to really support them with. But if you're actually thinking, I want to learn face massage, that's where possibly I might be able to step in later this year. Um, There are other practitioners that teach, you know, face massage methods, but actually later this year, for safety's sake, I'm going to say early next year, because it's quite a big project. I am going to be training therapists in my massage methods. And whether then say you're a, you know, a sports massage therapist or your thing is Swedish or aromatherapy, there's going to be massage skills that will give you the confidence to when you have someone on the bed to think, actually, I'm feeling confident to sway into working on this person's face. And as long as they haven't got any skin concerns, you're going to be pretty safe. But if skin like I said, is something that is really of interest to you and you're thinking, actually, no, I really want to get down in that. Yes, absolutely. Some kind of face massage course to give you that hands-on confidence. Because I also see a lot of dermatologists and aestheticians and let's say people doing injectables. They don't know how to cleanse the face. They don't know how to touch the face. They don't know how to massage the face. So this is actually where a specific face massage, learning those methods, actually touches quite a few people that would really benefit from that to be able to then further benefit and support their clients. I love it. Yes. And we're very excited to see on your website that you have those courses coming in the future. So we'll look forward to uh, checking those out when they're available. And Abigail, you've shared such great information with us today. I'm curious, what final thought would you like to share with our listeners as we end our podcast today? I think whether it's body, face, feet, hands, whatever type of therapy you're in, it's such a gift and a privileged position that we find ourselves in that people, they might meet you for the first time and whether they are allowing themselves to strip off in front of you and trusting you. For me, I, I specialize in face. Nowhere in life Do you go up to a total stranger or even someone who you've met a few times and touch their faces? It's such a, it's a very personal thing. And I feel very privileged that I'm, I'm trusted with that. And I suppose it's as a therapist, not taking that trust and relationships for granted. It's a real gift to be able to do that and make people feel happy and confident and yeah, it's also, I think it's important to take that time to go, yeah, this is, I'm helping someone physically, but I'm I'm also helping someone emotionally. I want to thank our guest today, Abigail James. For more information about Abigail and the good work she's doing, visit abigailjames.com. Thanks, Abigail. Thanks, Kristen. Thank you. Abigail, thank you so much for sharing all this great information we can take and incorporate not only into our work with our clients, but also into our own daily routines and self-care for our own skin. We really appreciate you. Members are loving ABMP 5-Minute Muscles and ABMP Pocket Pathology, two quick reference web apps included with ABMP membership. ABMP 5-Minute Muscles delivers muscle-specific palpation and technique videos, plus origins, insertions, and actions for the 83 muscles most commonly addressed by body workers. ABMP Pocket Pathology, created in conjunction with Ruth Werner, puts key information for nearly 200 common pathologies at your fingertips and provides the knowledge you need to help you make informed treatment decisions. Start learning today. ABMP members log in at abmp.com and look for the links in the featured benefits section of your member homepage. Not a member? 
Learn about these exciting member benefits at abmp.com slash more.